Minecraft. It's been with us for over 10 years and has become one of the most popular and long-lasting games in history. But did you know that throughout Minecraft's early development, there were dozens of different versions that were released with all kinds of features that you might never have even known existed? Did you know, for example, that there were early experimental versions including mobs that didn't last more than a couple of versions? Or that there was a version which gives a chest full of 99 of every item? Or perhaps that when experimenting with infinite terrain and structure generation, there's a version which generates gigantic brick pyramids. In this video, I'm going to show you how to go back and play these early versions so that you can experience Minecraft during its early development days for yourself. Only a handful of older versions are available to play via the official launcher, but archivists like the Omni Archive group have been working hard to catalogue and archive as many versions as possible. Not everything has been found yet, and there are many early versions of the game that are still missing. But by searching through old computers and hard drives, it may be possible to find them and help fill the gaps. Maybe you've got one of the missing versions on your dusty old computer that hasn't been touched in years. You never know. And if Minecraft's history interests you, I'm also doing a survival Let's Play series on this channel called Minecraft The Journey, where I've been playing through all of the versions of Minecraft since the very beginning, upgrading a survival world version by version, and eventually it'll upgrade all the way through to the latest modern release. If you're interested in something like that, you can find a card in the top right, or just browse around my channel and I'm sure you'll find it. There are three methods that I've used to help me play older Minecraft versions, and there are probably some older methods out there too. These methods are 1. Using the Minecraft Launcher, a more limited method that only gives you access to a few versions. 2. Using MultiMC and the Retrocraft proxy. This method is more manual, and it's what I've used up until this point. 3. Using the Betacraft Launcher, a very easy method for launching older Minecraft versions and that includes a proxy. I'm going to go through what each of these methods are and you can choose what works best for you. Communities like the Omni Archive are working on cataloguing and curating the once lost versions of Minecraft and making them available to the public again. Omni Archive has posted archives of early versions from the Minecraft Classic, InDev and InfDev, Alpha and Beta eras, which are all available via archive.org, and links to these are in the description. First, it's worth pointing out that these early versions only apply to the Java edition of the game. That's because the game's original development was all done on the Java platform, well before Bedrock and other variations of the game existed. It is possible to play some early versions of Minecraft using the official Minecraft launcher, but you're only going to have access to a handful of versions that have been selected by Mojang for use. To access these in the launcher, click on Installations. Make sure that you've selected Historical over here under Versions, and then create a new installation. Under Version, if you click the drop-down and scroll right to the bottom, you'll find plenty of versions underneath Old Alpha here, where you'll find Classic, one inf dev version, several alpha versions, and then a variety of beta versions as well. Choose the version that you want to run, let's say in this case, this version, and we'll call this one Minecraft Classic. Click Create, and then there it is. Click Play, and the game should launch. But this isn't my preferred method, because it gives you less control and it doesn't give you access to features like sound or your player skin. There were also so many other versions released around this time that are not available in the launcher, and if you really want to go back and experience early Minecraft, you'll need to go about it differently. To get started, you'll need MultiMC. To download that, you can go to multimc.org. Once it's downloaded, open the directory, and load the application. If you get one of these, it's just because Windows doesn't recognize the application. Click more info and then run anyway. Once the application loads up, you can choose your language and click next. And then if it doesn't detect Java, you can actually browse to your Minecraft launcher directory and use the Java from that. So go to this PC, down to C drive, program files, Minecraft launcher, and in here you should find Runtime. You can go to the JRE directory, bin, and then find Java W. Click Open, 
and next. Now click finish or disable the analytics if you don't want them. Now that we have MultiMC, we can add our first instance. Click on add instance and make sure that alphas is selected from the filter. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll find all of those early versions that were available in the launcher. Choose the version that most closely matches the version that you want to run. So in my case, for most of the classic versions, I'll choose this one. It just works best. If you click OK, you should be able to now run that game straight as you would out of the launcher. If you do run it, it's going to ask you to log in with your Minecraft account. So you'll need to do that first. Click on Add to add your account and then sign in. To create a new instance for a specific version, I recommend just creating a copy of what you've already made. So right click on this one and click Copy Instance. Give it a name that reflects the version that you want to run. So in our case, we want to run C0.27 underscore ST. You don't need any of these unless you want them. Once you've done that, it'll create a copy of that instance and then you'll be able to right click on it and edit it. Once you've done that, you'll see that the Minecraft version here is set to the version that we originally specified. Here you can replace the Minecraft version by going down here to replace minecraft.jar. Click on that and browse to the Omni Archive downloads that you made earlier. In this case, we're doing a classic version, so going to classic, and we were looking for this version, C0.27 underscore ST for survival test. Click on the jar file and click open, and now it should have a third row here which overrides the version we started from. Click launch, and the game should run. Let's say you want to run a version of indev or infdev. For this I would suggest creating a new instance. Make sure to click alphas as well, and scroll down to where you find that version of infdev which was provided by Mojang. Click on OK, there you go, you've got the stock standard version. Right click on this one and click copy instance. Give it the name of the version that you want to run. In this case, we're going to run indev 2009-12-23-2. If you want to as well, you can use the groups to organize your multi-MC to make sure that things aren't all cluttered and disorganized. So let's call this indev. We don't need either of these, so we can turn those off. There we go. Now we can right click and edit instance. Again, we only need to change the version here. So we need to go down to replace minecraft.jar Again, we browse to the Omni Archive directory and we'll go into indev. In this case, it was the first one here. Click the jar file and open. Now we've got it all ready to go. Click launch and the game should run. But what about sounds? Most of these early versions don't work with sounds because Mojang has deprecated the old method of delivering sounds and player skins, which was to download them from Minecraft.net. To rectify this, you can configure a specialized proxy in the multi-MC configuration to intercept those downloads and send them to you from somewhere else. One such service providing this is Retrocraft, who are a group of Minecrafters keeping classic Minecraft alive by running classic era servers, even today. But they're not the only group providing proxies, and are just one example that I've used in combination with MultiMC. To use Retrocraft, head over to retrocraft.net. Click register and sign up for an account. Make sure that your username matches the one you use in Minecraft just to make the whole process smoother. Once you've registered, you can click on your account to change your skin. Just go down to change skin, hit browse, and then find your skin and upload it. Back on the Retrocraft website is a configuration that you'll need for MultiMC. Down here at the bottom of the page, there's a Java arguments parameter that we need to add into our configuration, which will cause Minecraft to call out to the Retrocraft server instead of calling out to the old Minecraft.net. Retrocraft then sends the old game sounds down to your client and your player skin, and it's almost as if the old version of Minecraft has been relived and is back to normal. To add these arguments, just right click on any instance you have and click edit instance. Underneath the settings tab, go down to Java arguments and click the checkbox. Then just paste in the arguments from the Retrocraft website and you should be good to go. As long as you've signed up, it'll work. So here's a new instance of Minecraft running infdev. I'm just going to create a new world and you can see I've got my skin, which you can see if I press the I key. There I am, hello. And 
game sounds as well. So that's amazing. We've got everything that we need to play Classic or InfDev or any of these other Minecrafts. Arguably, the easiest method of all is to use the Betacraft launcher. Betacraft.pl are a community of players who have been running a Minecraft survival faction server using Minecraft Beta for many years, but have also put out a launcher and a proxy service which combines everything together and does all of the hard work for you. To download it, head to Betacraft.pl and click on the launcher. This will download the launcher's jar file, so be sure to save it somewhere that you'll be able to run it from later. With the Betacraft launcher, you don't have to worry about downloading the versions yourself or managing the proxy config, and it provides a self-contained launcher that you can use to manage the whole experience. When you load up the launcher, put your Minecraft username into this field. This will allow your player's skin to work. You can sign in if you want, but it's not required, and just remember that this is a third-party tool, so you should decide for yourself if you're comfortable using your Minecraft credentials with this service or not. To play, choose the Select Version button and pick the version that you want to run. It sorts from oldest versions to newest, and it seems to be a fairly complete list of known versions, so in our case, let's load up version A1.1.2 underscore 01, which is the last alpha version we upgraded to when playing on my Minecraft The Journey series. Click OK, and you can see the version down in the bottom left there. Click Play, and Minecraft will launch. It's as easy as that. If you want to keep organised, you can configure separate instances. This is important if you play different worlds on specific versions. In my case, I'll create an instance called The Journey for recording my series, and that way the instance will always remember the correct version, or I'll be able to update that version when it's time to do an upgrade for the series, and make sure that it remains the same. If I needed to set up separate profiles for anything else, I could create another instance and everything would be stored separately. On the file system, Betacraft stores all of its data under the .betacraft directory, right alongside the .minecraft directory. Inside here you'll find all of your different game versions, options and world saves. Out of all of the methods I've shown in this video, the Betacraft launcher seems to be the easiest and most seamless method to use. It wasn't until creating this video that I had really looked at it properly, my main method up to this point was to use MultiMC and the Retrocraft proxy, as that had worked pretty well for me up until now, but I think that I'm becoming a Betacraft convert. Although I do like to keep my own local library of early Minecraft versions for myself, there's something to also be said about the convenience of the Betacraft launcher doing all of the work for me. What I would say is that now that I've tried both versions with Retrocraft and Betacraft, I've learned a lot more about how this process works under the hood, and I think that that's a good thing. I hope that by showing these different methods to you, you've also understood a little more about this process too, and you'll be able to choose the best method that works for you. As you explore the development phase of Minecraft, keep in mind that not everything will work exactly as you expect, and some of the early versions are extremely buggy and prone to crashes. It can be frustrating, but that's how it is. I also want to recognise the hard work that communities like the Omni Archive, Retrocraft, Betacraft and other groups have put into making sure that Minecraft's history has remained preserved. Without them, my series wouldn't have been possible. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a good time exploring early Minecraft. Don't forget to like and share this video if you think it will help somebody out, and be sure to click the subscribe button to see more content from me. Please go and check out my Minecraft The Journey survival series. I just love creating that series and I'm always happy to see viewers enjoying it too. So until the next video, I've been Bugman CX. Bye.